Good day, YouTube. Welcome to another Wednesday on the Pagan Perspective. Uh, this week's topic is energy vampirism, or as I like to call it, psychic vampirism. I love this topic. This topic is very, very near and dear to my heart. Um, if you've been following me here on the Pagan Perspective for uh, over a year or more, you may have seen that my original um, video where I auditioned talked about Michelle Ballinger, who has written at least two books on psychic vampirism or energy vampirism. And I, it's just something that I find amazing. Um, it's kind of the thing that led me into magic in the first place, just the idea that, 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 that there are energies out there that you can use and take. But the question is more, uh, what you can find down below, is more geared toward the ethics in uh, in pagan circles, whether or not energy uh, vampirism is considered a good or bad thing, it seems like uh, the way the question is is quoted is that energy vampirism is seen as something that's bad and evil. And with the books that are out there, a lot of them are geared toward protection, how to protect yourself, how to shield and things, and sour your energy so that way energy vampires can't steal energy from you. It's the but the way I see it, energy exchange is natural. We all do this. We all exchange energy, especially in face-to-face -face conversations. So we all have these latent in, inner abilities to exchange and refine and take energy from one another. I'll give you a prime example. When is the last time you had a conversation with someone about some product movie or something that you both wanted but one person experienced it and you didn't? You had that conversation, and in this particular scenario, you became infected with their enthusiasm. Now, if someone was able to observe both of you during that conversation, it's highly likely if they were able to observe your auras, you would actually see energetic exchange. You would see colors from the aura start to mirror your friends. You may even see uh, tentacles or tendrils reach across to different uh, from different people in the facilitate that change of color to match that of your friend who experienced the actual product or movie that you want to experience. And that enthusiasm, that change, that feeling, that burst of energy, that want of that product is the result of the energetic exchange, which is something that in the energy uh, that psychic vampires can engage in. Um, another thing that should be said about, about psychic vampirism is that it certainly isn't always bad. There are certain times where people have have medical conditions or um, hormonal imbalances where they basically need to have certain energies pulled or culled from them and refined and put back in. Psychic vampires are perfect at this. Um, one thing that comes to mind is Reiki practitioners. Uh, they are people who are who have the ability to tap into your energetic field, monitor what is going on with your energy fields, and put the energy back in that needs to go in and remove the energy that doesn't need to be there. To me, that's a person that it, that, it, that engages in a type of psychic vampirism, but they are there to kind of be almost like a surgeon. They've used this skill to the point where they know how to go in and take what's needed and put in what's not needed, uh, or vice versa, and basically, focus on the health of the person. Um, it is possible that a psychic vampire may be someone who, 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 has, who is missing energy or doesn't know how to or doesn't have the ability to create the energy that they need so they must get it from the environment. Again, this is very natural. Um, if, you've, if you've ever had a conversation with someone that just for some reason they were down, they came into the room, they made you feel down, well, that's very similar to the first conversation uh, scenario, except for it's the reverse. They infected you with their depression. If someone is, so if someone was able to observe your auras, you would probably see the differences in the colors that the changes became to uh, started to affect your aura. You start to mirror what they were going through, and you ended up feeling bad because they did. This is a very natural thing. I encourage all of you out there who have even the slightest interest in psychic vampirism to go ahead, pick up several books, pick up the bad ones, pick up the good ones, read, read, read. It's an amazing thing. Um, it's very, very worth it. At the very least, pick up a, uh, a Reiki book. I love Reiki. 
Um, it's it's very similar to uh, psychic vampirism in that you can go in and be, kind of be an energy surgeon versus just taking energy. For the effective uh, psychic vampire, someone needs to be able to refine the energy, to put the energy back in versus just taking, 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 which is where the vampire aspect comes comes from. Another good example about uh, the energetic fields. Um, have you, if you've ever been somewhere in a mall or a school or just anywhere in general and you felt someone looking at you and when you looked over, they were staring at you and they, they kind of looked away, well, in my opinion, uh, that person found something interested, uh, interesting on you or something that you own or what have you and by their interest, by them staring at you, they literally sent out an energetic tentacle. It touched your aura, you felt it, and you looked in their direction. Um, this is something that I believe to be true and kind of falls along the whole lines of uh, psychic vampirism. I played around with it. I, I, I believe it to be something that I don't need. Um, but there are different categories of people. If you go into Ms. Sarah Bunger's book, she talks about the different people who are really well with um, grounding energy. Some people are really well with building energy. Um, I do believe that that is the case. There are people who, are, who have, have these innate abilities to just ground. The people who have these innate abilities to just bring up a lot of energy. Prime example, again, is for someone who's always energetic, always up, 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 always crazy. You just always have this great energy no matter what's going on. Everyone else could be down and depressed, but they're always up and bursting with energy. That person is someone who naturally needs to have some of that energy re removed. A psychic vampire can take the energy out and give it to someone who needs it, like someone who's always down and can't quite. Um, someone who's a, someone who's always grounded may need the energy from the from the energetic person. A psychic vampire would be great to kind of get that moved over to them. So as far as in the moral realm of things, um, all of this comes down to intent. Even with spells, when it comes down to it, what do you intend to do? If you intend to harm the person you may end up taking too much energy. There, there are um, documented things in some of these books that say that if you draw or, or, you, or if you perform what they call a deep draw on someone who's kind of old or kind of sick, you may cause extreme illness in them or even death. So it is, you can kind of go toward the bad side with this, but again, it's with intent. In the, in the end, uh, Everything comes down to intent, even your magical spells. What do you intend to do? If you intend to harm, you can produce spells that will harm someone. So intent is a very important thing when it comes to uh, Reiki practice or psychic vampirism or uh, energy of vampirism. Um, it's important to um, think about your intent when you're performing some of these things. Thanks for that great question. Again, please go out there, pick up books, read them, check out Michelle Ballinger's books, check out any newer authors that have put some books up. It's a wonderful topic to be well-versed in, and the rewards are quite great once you understand how it works. Thanks for watching, and blessed be.